Good evening and thanks for joining us. Many Canadians are taking advantage of Black Friday shopping deals today. We'll get to that in a moment. But we begin with a story about how some of this country's bravest citizens are giving up hope. Three Canadian soldiers have committed suicide this week, all of them veterans of the war in Afghanistan. And many other soldiers still on active duty are suffering in silence, barely holding on. And as Shirley Engel reports, they say they're not getting the help they need. Seven years after Warrant Officer Frank Mellish was killed in Afghanistan, his cousin, Warrant Officer Michael McNeil, could no longer live with the pain. He was suffering survivor's guilt. There's no doubt in my mind he was. I think they should have had him on a suicide watch, and they didn't, and uh, I think they dropped the ball on that. McNeil's uncle, also Frank's father, told us the two were like brothers, serving two tours together. We're a close family, and, and uh, we always thought very highly of him and he, him of us, and then... It's, it's gone right back to where we were seven years ago. McNeil was one of three Canadian soldiers to commit suicide this week alone, sparking a national outcry, compelling a long-serving soldier from CFB Petawawa to come out of the shadows. The only thing that kept me around uh, was I wouldn't do that to my children. Still on active duty, he wants his image and voice protected. He's attempted suicide three times. It takes months to get in. They treat you as quickly as they can, and you're back out the door. We cannot prevent every one of these tragedy, but what we can do, what we must do, is we must ensure that we learn whatever lesson they are to be learned, each one, and that is not taking place. The government has launched investigations into the three suicides and boosted the health budget at National Defense. Now we're $420 million a year, and $50 million of that is, 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 is compartmentalized just for mental health. We've almost doubled the number of uh, health professionals. But experts in post-traumatic stress say more is needed, warning this week's tragedies won't be our last. Dr. Greg Passy says up to 50% of soldiers with mental health problems will contemplate suicide, 19% will try. We're seeing a wave of Afghan veterans uh, coming forward. It often takes months to as much as five years before an individual uh, has enough symptoms or are aware of their symptoms uh, and level of dysfunction before they come forward. He says resources are scarce, wait lists have developed, that soldiers and veterans in rural areas complain they can't get timely access to care. And there are many soldiers out there who refuse help at all, self-medicating with drugs and alcohol. Donna? So much more to do. Shirley Engel in Ottawa, thank you. According to the Department of National Defense, 74 full-time soldiers killed themselves over the past five years. That does not include reservists or veterans. The military does investigate every suicide, but those investigations are lagging, and the vast majority of cases are still open file.